Alright, in this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to animate a whole dashboard with just one slider control. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. Dashboards often are more like decorative stuff, so you don't really want to waste a lot of time and keyframes to animate them. So we'll obviously use some expressions to be able to do that. And now, let's get started. My comp is 10 seconds long, HD resolution. The background is a simple solid with a radial gradient ramp. On top of it, a rectangular shape with a 2 pixel white stroke and a transparent fill. Let's start with that speedometer here at the right. We use the ellipse tool, double click on it to create a shape, then resize it. 350 by 350 pixels. No fill. Stroke width, 40 pixels. Color, black. Let's name it Speedometer Background. Then we duplicate it. Rename it Speedometer <laughs> and change the field color into Cyan, which shows the actual speed. Alright, obviously we need a slider control. So let's add a new null object, which we name Speed. Capitals. Then we go to Effect and Expression Controls, Slider Control. Let's rename it as well speed, as it controls the speed. Next we open the add menu and add a trim path animator to the ellipse. We open the trim paths property, select the speed layer to see the slider control. Then we simply link the end property to the slider control. That's it, the slider control controls the progress bar. For the inner progress bar we duplicate the two shapes, move them up, then shrink the path size of the two shapes to 250 by 250 pixels and darken the inner stroke color. We want the end to react slightly different, so we click into the expressions field and multiply the speed value by 0.75. So the inner bar is 25% shorter. Next, let's add this horizontal bar here in the center. We use the rectangle tool to add a shape. Double click on it. Fill color black. Stroke color cyan. Width 2 pixels. Let's name it, of course, bar background. It's way too big, so let's resize it to 800 by 120 pixels. Then we add the actual bar. With no layer selected, we use the pen tool to draw a straight horizontal line. Then switch back to the selection tool. No fill, stroke width 100 pixels. And this time we use a linear gradient as stroke color. Left color, a bright yellow, right color, a dark red. We need to adjust the start and end point of the ramp. All right, let's name it bar. Then we use the Effects and Presets window to add mosaic. 20 horizontal blocks and let's say 150 vertical blocks, sharp colors. Then we position it. And because of the mosaic effect, we need to fine tune the background position. Again, we add a trim path animator. Let's move the speed layer to the top again. And like before, we link the end property to the slider control. Awesome! Expressions are snippets of code that allow you to create animations that would be impossible to design manually. In this Domestica course, Desmond teaches you how to code expressions to create complex animation rigs. Learn to use a variety of techniques to make a series of abstract geometric animations. Get familiar with the basics of coding expressions and learn about procedural design. And work on complex animations based on mathematical equations. I've added the link to this course and all animation courses to the description. Use the code manual as motion 10 to get an extra 10% off. Alright, let's animate some buttons. First we add a new solid, name it mask buttons. Then we need to add some buttons. With no layer selected, we use the ellipse tool again, double click on it. We choose a fill color, like cyan, and no stroke. Let's name the shape button 1. Then we obviously need to resize it, 55 by 55 pixels. Let's hide the mask for now and position the first button. We duplicate the button twice, form like a column. Select all three of them and distribute them vertically using the alignment tool. 
Then we duplicate them a few more times until we have eight columns with three buttons each, moving them a bit to the right. Then let's select row by row and, and distribute them horizontally this time. Let's move the speed layer to the top again. Then we select the mask layer again and add fractal noise. We change the noise type to block, reduce complexity to one, increase contrast 1500, brightness 60. In transform we deselect uniform scaling. Then change the scale width and height and we offset the turbulence until there is one block behind each button. That looks about right. We want the blocks to be either black or white, no grays. So let's add levels and get rid of all the grays. We increase the input black and white until they're really close together. <laughs> like one number apart. Next we need the buttons to react to the mask. So let's add the set matte effect. We use the luminance, take the matte from the mask layer, of course, and effects and masks. Nothing happens, cause white means the button is visible. We copy the effect and paste it to a button with a black background. Awesome. Now we need to paste the effect to all the other buttons. Hide the mask shape, then we animate the evolution again. Add an expression, then Add time asterisk. We could add a value like 50, meaning the value changes 50 degrees per second. Or we link it to the slider control. And multiply the result by 3 to increase the value. The speed of the button's animation changes with the overall speed. This is fast and very slow. Awesome. Then let's check out how to do this pressure gauge here. We double click on the ellipse tool to create a new shape. No fill, cyan stroke, and the width, two pixels. Of course, we name the layer pressure gauge. We resize the ellipse path 150 by 150 pixels. Let's actually solo the layer for now and zoom in. With the layer selected, we grab the pen tool to add a needle. We store it right in the center and draw a straight line upwards. Let's name the shape needle. Stroke width 20 pixels. We open the stroke settings, go into the taper property and we set the end length to 100%. Let's close all that again. In the transform property of the needle shape, we need to animate the rotation of the needle. Problem, the rotation is in degrees, 0 to 360. The slider goes from 0 to 100. To relate these different values, we use a linear expression. So first of all, let's establish a variable. R, like rotation, equals, then we link to the slider control. Semicolon, then we add the linear expression linear and then in parentheses r the variable comma 0 comma 100 the min and max slider value and these are now related to the min and max degree values comma 0 comma 360 awesome but we want the needle to wiggle a little <laughs> like the pressure is unstable so we add a wiggle expression plus wiggle in parentheses 3 comma 10, meaning 3 times per second the needle wiggles max 10 degrees. That's it. And it wiggles. Finally, let's add a star field to the background. We add a new solid above the background layer. Name it stars. Then we add CC starburst. Let's mess with the settings. We set grid spacing to 6, size to 30. Then Add an expression to the speed property, cause we want the speed to be controlled by the slider. And just like before, we use a linear expression, cause the speed values in Starburst are much smaller. We establish a variable, s equals, we link to the slider control. <laughs> There's a lot of layers here. Don't forget the semicolon. Then we use the linear expression again. Linear, in parentheses, s, comma, 0, 100, 0, 0 0.6. 
Let's check it out. Zero, <laughs> nothing happens. We go a bit faster and very fast. Awesome. Additionally, we add Echo. I stole the idea to combine CC Starburst and Echo from one of Motion by Nick's tutorials. I've added the link to the description. We set echo time to minus 0, 0,01. Then add an expression to number of echoes, cause we want that number to depend on the speed. Actually, we simply copy the expression we just did and paste it to the number of echoes property. Instead of 0 0.6, we add 20. The only property you need to animate now is the slider control. Make sure to check out the free project file and all the other links in the description. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and hit the bell, cause you don't want to miss my next video. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye guys.